All right. So we talked about the properties of water, section 2.2. .2. Okay, so if you want to look at your notes for 2.2, .2. what's the chemical formula of water? H2O. H2O. So how many hydrogens do we have? Two and how many oxygens? One. All right, so I'm going to draw my molecule like this, like a Mickey Mouse. So we have our two little itty bitty hydrogens and our big old fat oxygen. Okay, now, which ones are positively charged? The hydrogens or the oxygen? The hydrogen. Positive, remember? Which one's negatively charged then? Oxygen. Why? It's a polar molecule. So what's happening? What's the oxygen doing? It's attracting the electrons. So it's pulling more of the electrons towards itself, pulling the electrons away from the hydrogen. So we call it a polar molecule because there's an uneven distribution of electrons. Do you want us to write stuff down? Nope, you don't need to. And a lot of times when we do the review, for these first few times, I'm going to write stuff on the board. But the next few times, I'll probably just ask you questions and have you just like repeat stuff. Okay, so it's a polar molecule. It can do several things that other molecules cannot do. What were the four properties of water that we discussed? Oh. Yeah. Cohesion. Cohesion, one of them. What else? Adhesion, what else? Uh-huh, and? <laughs> Less than oh, yeah. solid, very good. So we have cohesion, adhesion, high specific heat, and less dense as a solid. Okay, which one of these means that ice floats on the top of water? Less dense as a solid. So ice floats. Which one? Is water being attracted to other types of molecules? Adhesion. Hey, I like that. So water to other molecules. All right, so then that means that cohesion is what? Like water to the same molecule. Yes, water to water. Water is attracted to other water molecules. And high specific heat means what? Yes, it takes a lot of energy to change the temperature of water. So that means that we don't have boiling oceans or completely frozen oceans. Lots of energy to change the temperature. So even if the air temperature changes drastically, because of the high specific heat, our water stays relatively the same temperature year round. And then ice flows on the top of water to help insulate it, even in those areas where winter happens, where it gets cold, living things can stay alive underneath that body of water. All right, which one, cohesion or adhesion, is the primary force in allowing water to move up through the roots of plants? Adhesion. I know what it's called. What is it called? Capillary action. Excellent. So water moves up through the roots of a plant to the tallest branches via capillary action. And again, that's the primary force, adhesion. Does, what else does it use? What other force does it use? A little tiny bit of cohesion, just a little bit of cohesion, okay? Next. Which property water allows little water insects to walk across the top? Cohesion. That's insects on the top of water. We also call that surface tension. Okay. Next, we talked about the pH scale. I'm going to write that down here. My pH scale goes from what number to what number? Zero. 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 To 4. 
14, and in the middle I got 7. What can I find at 7? Water, it's neutral. Where can I find a base? Up here or down here? Over here. Where do I find the acid then? Okay. Am I a strong acid at 1 or closer up here to 7? Okay, so I'm strong here. As I move towards 7, I become weak. Same thing with my base. Over here towards 7, I'm weak, and I become stronger as I move towards 14. Okay, from there, we're going to talk a little bit about macromolecules, large molecules. So, our four categories of macromolecules are what? Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. Lipids. Nucleic acids and proteins. You guys are remembering it in the list that I did before, right? So carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. Okay? What's the small little subunit that makes up a carbohydrate called? The sugar. What's the name of it? Monosaccharides, very good. Monosaccharide. If you remember, you could say the S stands for sugar. Some examples of these are what? Starches and sugars, right? So inside our body, when we eat anything that's a carbohydrate, it breaks down into sugars. Does anybody remember the name of the sugar? Glucose, good job guys. So our examples are sugars and starches. They break down into glucose. And what's the whole point of carbohydrates? Like what do they give us? Give us energy. So it's the main source of energy. Okay. Next, we have lipids. What's the first word now that you think of when you think of lipids? Fatty acids. Fatty acids. They're made out of fatty acids. So the small monomer that makes them up is a fatty acid. Okay. What are some examples of lipids? Oils, fats, cholesterol, earwax, waxes. Okay. Those are all examples. So fats, oils. Cholesterol, waxes. What's the whole purpose of a lipid? Store energy. Store energy. Also, the oil that we secrete on our skin helps to keep us moisturized, helps protect our skin. Earwax helps to keep our ears clean and keep yuck from getting in there. Also, lipids, remember, we talked about cell membranes. What were the cell membranes made out of? Remember the word? It starts with a P. Phospho. Lipids. Phospholipids. Remember when we talked about the cell membrane? They're made out of phospholipids. So lipids surround all of our cells as well. Next, we have nucleic acids. What are two examples of nucleic acids we have in our body? DNA and RNA. Okay, again, NA, nucleic acids. Our nucleic acids are made out of smaller subunits called, that's one part of it, nucleotides. So they're made out of nucleotides, and each nucleotide has those three parts. The what? What are they? The three parts? A phosphate, a sugar, and a base. Or a nitrogen containing base. I'll just put nitro base. Very good. And our DNA and RNA, what do they have to do with? Our genetic makeup and protein. Very good. So they have things to do with our genetic information. They store and transmit our genetic info. Next, proteins. Proteins are made out of subunits called amino acids. And remember when we talked about proteins, we said they're super, super important because they control our traits. 
They control the chemical reactions that happen in your body. They help to fight disease. They also build muscle and other parts of the cell. So they're super, super important for us. Okay, so when we're talking about proteins, what was the example I gave you of a protein? Enzymes. Now, when we talk in section 2.4 and 2.5, we talked all about enzymes and we called them biological catalysts. What did they do for the chemical reaction? Speed up. Speed it up. So it's a biological catalyst. And it actually speeds up the chemical reaction. And it does that by lowering the activation energy. Thank you. Speeds up the chemical reaction. So when we took our notes on that, do you remember we drew that little graph? I had you draw that to show the activation energy. Please, guys, remember this graph. We drew it on our notes. It looked like this. The first hump showed how much activation energy was needed in the chemical reaction without the enzyme. Okay? And it showed an arrow like this. That's how much energy is needed without the enzyme. Then it showed us a little dotted line that starts in the same area, but the little hump was much shorter because it's showing how much less energy that's required with the use of the enzyme, okay? So you always have to have, always get picked, like you will always be shown this graph at some point on your EOC or midterm, okay? And it will always show this line here showing the reaction without the enzyme and the little dotted one must be less, okay? Showing the energy of the reaction with the enzyme and showing that it's speeding up that chemical reaction. Okay, any questions about those four? Carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, or proteins? Okay, all right, so that's all chapter two. That's all where I'm gonna leave it today. Next week I will talk more about cells. We're gonna leave it there because I want you guys to have time for missing work. Good?